I've been using this tool for years. It's super powerful and super difficult to master. Today we're looking at X64 debug. Welcome to the X64 debug walkthrough. So today, everything that we're gonna be doing is also been published on my GitHub. Anything from the source code to the example files, so even some crack me challenges. Go check it out. All right, let's take a look at X64 debug. So it is an open source debugger for Windows. It can be downloaded at the link below. And there's four major sections. We've got the CPU assembly in red, We've got the registries in blue, we got the heap in green, then we also have the stack in yellow. So at the very top, we have our play controls. We got the start, stop, step into, and step over uh, buttons. Then we also have the view tabs. The ones we're going to be looking at the most today is going to be the CPU tab, the breakpoint tab, the memory stack, along with the references tab. So the biggest thing about X64 debug is that CPU assembly main pane. So on the very far left of this, we have the address. Let's start off with 0040. That's the address of each individual assembly instruction, followed by its hex representation, then followed by the instruction itself. So we can see that we got a push, a call, an add, and a return. These are all the assembly instructions that we're going to be doing. On the right side, we have the registry. We have the E values for the 64 bits, so EAX, EBX, ECX, and then we have R, RAX, RBX, RCX, if we're using the 64 bits. So in this example, this is a 32 bit example, so we have EAX and EBX. A couple big things to point out here is EAX is used for math and return values. Every function we're going to call, printf, scanf, they all have return values that are going to return here in the EAX. So we're going to want to take a look at that when we're trying to figure out if it has succeeded or not. EBX is the base index usually used for arrays. ECX is the counter for arrays or for loops for anything that needs to be counted. And then EDX is used for different uh, math problem solving. EBX is a base pointer. ESP is that stack pointer. And the stack pointer can bounce up and down in relation to that base pointer. And then if we need to clear the stack, then we just go back down to the base pointer. We make the ESP the same as the EBP. Then we also have ESI and EDI. The big one that I love the most is the heap. In the heap, we can take a look at a memory address, and then we can see if there's any information there. Well, once we get that information, there's a lot of things we can do. But I usually use the dump here to see what other things have been embedded into my executable. Injecting a DLL is an example. We can have it embedded inside the executable, pull it out later, and then launch it. And then the stack. Once again, this is the EBP and, when, and the ESP. This is where they shine. A lot of things are put on the stack throughout the execution of, a, of an executable. And they can be anything from actual strings to addresses of other variables, strings, locations, function addresses. All right, today we're actually gonna be looking at Ghidra as well. Something that I want to do is show you how you can use Ghidra and X64 debug together. So Ghidra is NSA's software reverse engineering suite. It can be downloaded at the link below. And it has two major panes, the red one and the blue one. Red one being the assembly code, as they call the listing, and then the blue one being the decompiled code. So what Ghidra does is it reads the assembly and the machine assembly language that the machines are used to, and that puts it in something a little bit more readable for us. For example, we have a message and printf. The message is put before printf and the assembly is put onto the stack, and then the function is called. A little bit different than how most coders think of it. They think of call the function and then pass in the parameter. Ghidra gives us that in a more human readable context. So what we can do is we can add them together for a really interesting workflow in which we can look at Ghidra in a language that is a little bit more understandable to, to us programmers. We can statically look at that 
and then we can pull up x64 debug and run it dynamically so we can see what is exactly being put into every single register and every single step of that process. But hey, let's not talk about it anymore. Let's jump into it. So the first example that we are going to look at is a very simple assembly code executable. I have written my own hello world executable in assembly. So that way we can take a look at how it would be written in assembly. Then we're going to take a look at it in x64 debug to see if there's any similarities. So what I've done is I have created a value called message. And inside of this value called message, I have hello world. I have a carriage return. Then I have a null terminator. So this is the string that we're going to be asking to be printed. And if we look here, we are going to be pushing message to the stack. Then later we're going to be calling printf to print out this message. And then we're going to clean up the stack by moving it four bytes because the address location where we're going to be putting the message is indeed four bytes long. And then we're going to be returning. After every user written function, after every user written main code, we're going to be returning back so the program can continue running and terminate gracefully. So let's take a look at how this looks in x64 debug. All right, so I'm going to pull up x64 debug real quick, and we're going to take a look at something. I'm going to drag this assembly code into x64 debug. And if you look at the very bottom, it's hard to read, but here it says use x32 debug to debug this file. This was written in 32 bit, so x64 debug wants to use x32 debug instead. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. So before we go any further, let's take a look at exactly what it does. So if you can see here, I ran assembly 0x00.exe and it replied back with hello world. I'm going to do it one more time so you can see it in real time. That's all it does, it just replies back with hello world. If we see there's also a blank here for that carriage return, and then it was null terminated after that. Very simple, hello world. So let's take a look at it in x32 debug. All right, so as soon as we get in x32 debug, we see that it is being ran here and debugged inside of the debugger. So it is actively running. Um, since we jump in, I see that I am at the entry point. Hopefully you're at the entry point as well. Um, if not, then we need to do some things to get you there. So if you look at the top of mine, in very small letters, it says assembly underscore 0x00.exe. I am in user code. You have a couple options. You can click on the, one of these buttons up here that says run to user code. It's a little arrow pointing at a guy in a blue shirt. You can run to user code until you get to the entry point, or you can hit play until you get to the entry point. So, what is most likely happening if you go to options and preferences, um, if you're not at the entry point, it's because you have a couple of these checked. I like to uncheck all mine, but I'm going to go ahead and recheck it right now, and I'm going to hit reload. All right, so at the very top of mine now, you see it says nt.dll. I'm in one of the DLLs on my window box uh, created by Microsoft. I don't need to debug what Microsoft has done. So I'm going to click just the run button and it's going to put me into the thread stack location. And then I'm going to hit run again. It's going to put me into another you know, uh, thread stack location. And then it's finally going to get me to the entry point. Subsequently, I can click on the little guy and that'll do more or less the same. It put me into another um, another location that's not quite to the entry point. But if I keep hitting play, it'll finally take me to the entry point. But why do all that? We're going to go into preferences. We're going to uncheck everything that is not entry point breakpoint. That is not entry breakpoint. We're going to hit save. We're going to reload. Now we're all at the entry point. So this is a small assembly file. You saw all we do is push a message and print the message. So in theory, we should be able to scroll down until we see something that we recognize. So I see some git module handles, some load libraries, git process address, 
um, exit. None of those were in the assembly code that, that we wrote. Uh, free library printf. Printf was indeed inside the code that we wrote. And right above it is hello world. That is in memory location of 404004. So we can get there by scrolling on this one because there's not that much overhead for assembly, uh, assembly code. But what we can do is I'm going to go ahead and jump back to where my uh, my stack pointer is by hitting the asterisk key on my keyboard. It's going to jump me right back to where the program currently is. I'm going to right click up here. I'm going to go to search for current region string references. And when I click in the string references, you're going to notice that my tab up here is now selected on references. I'm going to find hello world and we can do one of two things. We can right click and set a breakpoint or we can hit F2 on our keyboard. I'm going to hit F2. I'm going to go back to this CPU tab. And then I want to click Run. So what the program has done, it has let the program run in real time all the way up to this breakpoint where we find Hello World. So we are going to be pushing this onto the stack. If I step over and then come down here and look at the stack, I see that this assembly 404004 has now been pushed to the stack. And then the next up is going to be that printf, which is going to call this address location. But what's in that address location? x64 debug, or in this case, x32 debug, believes it's hello world. But how do we know that? If we right click on, th on the instruction itself, and then we go to follow and dump, one of my favorite things, and then select this 040004. Select like that, we're going to see that down here it shows us that hello world is actually inside of the memory location along with the, the carriage return followed by a zero to end the string. So hello world is going to print whatever is in this address all the way up to the null character to include the carriage return. So we're going to go ahead and step, we're going to do another step over. And then we're going to allow printf to do what printf does, which if all went well, should print hello world into our console. So if you notice, I did a step over instead of a step into. If I had stepped into printf, I would be going into the code of printf itself and debugging the printf code. I don't really care what printf does underneath the hood. I just care that it prints. So I stepped over it. And when I stepped over it, we realized that we have uh, e EAX of C. Now EAX is where it tells us, tells us whether it succeeded or not. So we can figure out exactly if it succeeded by taking a look online to see exactly what the return value of printf is. So I typed in printf msdn, and I'm gonna select the very first one, docs.microsoft.com. And which if I go down here a little bit, to return value, I'm going to see that it returns the number of characters printed. So if it prints something, it's going to tell us how much it printed. If it print nothing, it's going to say zero. So we can take a look at that. So once again, EAX came back with a C in its registry and that comes out to a grand total of 12. So it did succeed and it succeeded by printing 12 characters. All right. Our next function is going to add four to the ESP. So once again, we read everything in the Intel syntax from right to left. So it's gonna add four to the ESP, not adding ESP to four. So we're gonna step over that. And when we stepped over that, we saw that this turned gray and this over here is highlighted with the, the black marker. So this still exists in memory, but we are no longer allowing it to be an active address that we are using. Thus, we've cleared the stack. And then we do a return. And that is the program. So we're going to go ahead and let it run until it terminates. Next, we're going to look at two samples that I've called main 00 and main 01. So let's really quickly take a look at what they do. I'm going to launch a command prompt, go to where they are stored at. And then let's do main zero zero. Main zero zero merely says hello from main. So we're going to take a look at that that source code. 
Once again, Striker 2K2 BDG demo inside of GitHub. I'm going to main 00, and all it does is print hello from main. That's it. So let's take a look at what that looks like in X64 debug. I'm going to drag this over here. We're going to do the 64 one this time. I'm going to make this bigger. Do some zooming in. And then I'm doing zooming in by holding control and using the mouse wheel. Alright, I am currently at the entry point already. If you're not, once again, preferences, make sure only entry breakpoint is on. Uh, this time I'm going to skip straight to uh, search for current region. And I can do string references because I know that it says hello world. But I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do intermodular call. I'm going to look at all of the functions that have the word printf in them. We're going to see exactly which ones that we have. So I've seen the source code already, so I know that we're going to be doing a printf, not a fprint or a vfprint, just printf. So I'm going to hit F2 on my keyboard to add that breakpoint. Go back to the CPU tab, hit run. All right, so this is doing it a little bit differently than assembly code. If you tried to scroll down, it would have taken longer to get to this point, which is why I immediately went for the breakpoint. And if we take a look here, whatever is in 404000, it is passing into RCX, which is going to be over here. So let's really quickly follow and dump to that constant. And as soon as we do that, we see that it is hello from main. Let's go ahead and step over that. We're going to see that now that that address is not in the stack like it was last time, but it is now inside of the RCX registry. And then we're going to be doing a printf, which is going to be printing whatever is inside this RCX registry. And once again, you can see that all these are now R for 64 bit. All right, so we're going to allow it to do that. We're going to step over it. And then once that's done, we can jump back into RIX and see that we have a value of 12 in here to say how many characters we've printed. Once again, that is all in the hex. So 12 actually comes out to 18 in this case. And then we're going to let it clean up the stack, moving the stack pointer, zeroizing out the EAX. Um, so even though this is RAX, EAX is only the first half of this registry. So instead of trying to zero out the entire 64-bit, um, the 64-bit registry, you just went ahead and zeroed out the 32-bit because the rest of it wasn't even being used. We just let it um, clean everything up and then do its return. And then if we come here, we'll see that it indeed says hello from main. Very simple, written in C this time instead of assembly, and a little bit different on where it actually put that parameter. We're going to go ahead and let it run to the end. All right, and then let's take a look at the next one. The next one is going to be main 01. So this one's a little bit different. If we look at it, we are, we are doing a hello library, I'm sorry, a load library on hello.dll. Hello.dll, I've already compiled and I've put it into this same folder. So main 01 is going to call, is going to load hello.dll. Let's take a look at what that does. And here underneath the DLL folder, let's go into hello.c. And this is a Windows DLL. Um, and as soon as this DLL is attached to a process, it's going to put, it's going to output a debug string, but even more importantly, it's going to run a function. And this function is going to be hello message box which hello message box is going to reply back with hello world at an end this reason, which is going to be in this case, the LL attached process. So this is how the source code itself looks. But what we're going to do is we're going to also look at it in Ghidra and see how Ghidra decided to translate it um, with an emphasis on how it decided to translate main zero one. We're going to look at how it does this translation. All right, I got this pulled up, um, and I have this in the background. Let's go ahead and minimize that. We're going to open up Ghidra. And if you have any questions about Ghidra, 
check out my YouTube channel. I got a lot of good Ghidra content to include how to install Ghidra. So I've already got main 01 here loaded, ready to go. I'm going to double click on that. And I'm going to make it big for the time being. Once you get into Ghidra, you got to find out where the main function is. It's kind of complicated sometimes. I like to start off with export and see what all has been exported. In this case, a lot of things have been exported. But what I usually do is I try to find something, anything that says start or main, or in this case, CRT. So this is where I usually start. I try to find anything inside of the exports that has the word start, main, or CRT. So as soon as I pull this up, I see that the decompiler went ahead and decompiled it into C, where if I try to do this in x 64 debug, I would be looking at all this assembly code. And even though I understand assembly code, it takes a while to translate and to get through. So this is where we rely on, on Ghidra. So this is a T main X uh, CRT startup. It looks very promising. Let's go ahead and jump into that. First off, let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger. All right, so I am clicking into the display. We're gonna go into font. I'm gonna make it 18, hit okay, hit apply. Excellent. So I'm gonna double click on CRT startup and it follows it here in the assembly as it's working in the decompiler. Um, and what I do is when I get to startup, I look for a couple of things. I look for the startup info. This is not user created. This is all created by the C runtime, but I know I'm at least in the right spot. So I, I scroll all the way down to the bottom because normally the last thing that is done is to launch the user code. If we see, we have main right here. It's already labeled, but if you can't really find it, if it's labeled improperly, main always returns an integer. And this has an integer return. I can scroll up to the top. Let me go ahead and middle click on this real quick. And now I've highlighted everything that says main. Let me scroll up to the top and back to the bottom. Yep, this is the only time that this is used. So this is absolutely the exit code for main. So I'm gonna double click into here. And then this is exactly where where we need to be. We have load library, load library right here with this local string of 28. Uh, the local string, if I use my middle click, it starts right here. And Ghidra, Ghidra likes to break things up. So this is actually our hello world. If I were to double click right here, it would bring me to this portion, which this is at the very top where everything is originally instantiated. And then right below it, we're gonna see that it is indeed Z hello.dll in which it breaks it into several different things, but the entire string is this hello.dll. If you want to, you can, either, you can also hover over it. You can see how it's starting to be broken down. Now, if this is still confusing to you, another thing that you can do and that I do quite often is I like to go to CyberChef. And CyberChef, oh, my apologies, it took you straight to the GitHub. We're gonna go this one, uh, GCHQ GitHub IO. CyberChef is an amazing tool to be able to do a lot of this translation very quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here and I'm going to copy that. And then we're going to go back into CyberChef and we're going to paste this plain text. And I'm going to get rid of the 0x. And then I'm going to, from over here, I'm going to do from hex and drop it into a recipe. And we see that we already have something showing up here and something that's a little bit more human readable. So I'm gonna take the next one, we're gonna copy it over, paste this in here, take out the zero X, and then do that to the third one, copy, place it over here and get rid of the zero X. And now we're starting to see that we have hello.dll. The only problem is that it's kind of backwards.
and it is backwards because of the way that assembly works. It is placing it in a reverse order. So we take a look at it now. We have Z uh, forward slash H E L L dot D L L. So this is our hello dot D L L inside of inside of the memory stack inside of the memory of the executable. So it's pointing us to that place to be able to load our DLL. So it loads library at this memory location all the way until it reaches the null terminator. Once it loads that, then it launches whatever it is in which in this case that DLL has it where as soon as it's attached, it's going to it's going to do a message box. So let's go ahead and see it in real time. Instead of going into the the command prompt, I'm just going to go ahead and double click on it. And we see that as soon as we do it, it indeed does that process attached, just like we said. All right. That is Ghidra, but even better is what we can do with Ghidra and X64 debug side by side. Right, so I'm going to go back to where I was originally, which is right up here at the very top of main. So I'm going to get my X64 debugger to the same point inside of Ghidra. So I'm right at the main. All right, let's go ahead and bring this open. I'm going to drag zero one into there. I'm going to minimize that. So a couple ways I can do this. Number one, let's make sure that I'm at the entry point. I am at the entry point. So I can right click. I can search for current region. I can either pick string references or I can do intermodular calls. Or I can figure out where main starts, which is 00401560. And then over here, I can hit control G, not just G by itself that brings up the, the graph, which is very useful by the way, but I can hit control G and in here I can type in exactly what I see over here in Ghidra where the main starts, which in this case is going to be 00401560 and hit enter. All right, I'm going to go ahead and scroll this over a little bit so we can see and we very quickly see that we have our load library here along with something inside of that memory location, which is going to be hello DLL. So very quickly, we were able to look at something written in a human readable context, which is this over here in Ghidra. We were very, very quickly able to see something that we can understand and very easily, you know, relabel if we wanted to. And we were able to get here and look at it dynamically using X64 debug. One great thing about using X64 debug is you can extract some things that are embedded in the executable. Like a DLL example. We have hello.dll in this executable that we are using load library on and thus putting that DLL into the executable memories, uh, the executable memory space. So we can extract that if we don't have access to it to begin with. So let's go ahead and extract that out of the out of the executable's memories address. So we can do that by, let me go ahead and make this bigger. Let me go ahead and run to this point. So we can do that by allowing it to load library and bring that DLL into the memory range. I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of steps. There's our DLL process attached. And I'm gonna keep going before I get to load library. I'm gonna stop right there because now the DLL should be fully loaded and it hasn't been released yet. So I'm gonna jump into memory map I'm going to sort by initial over here. So if you look at this initial column, you have R's and RW's and ERW's. We're looking for anything that says ERW. And we can see that we have a lot of DLLs inside of here. And there is one that caught my attention. I mean, we have our WinNets and our kernel DLLs, but this one, hello.dll, that is one that, um, that isn't native to Microsoft. So this is the DLL that we're going to be looking at. So we can do a couple things. We can right click and dump memory to file, or we can use a plugin. All right, so what I've done is in X64 debug, natively cilia is installed. 
So we can use this to be able to pull that DLL out of memory and be able to save it to the, the disk so we can use it or reverse engineer it later. So once this is up and once I verify that that DLL is indeed inside of our, our user process, inside of the executable's memory, uh, we can go ahead and come here and we can click on pick DLL. And for me, about halfway down, it is right here underneath uh, hello.dll. Let's click OK. When you download a DLL, it's just zeros and ones. And it still needs to be able to get some of the the, the some of the import address tables that it that it needs to actually work. So what we can do is we can click on this uh, AIT auto search and allow this plugin to search for that um, that import address table. Let's go ahead and click yes here and it says it found some and then let's go ahead and get those imports. So now this DLL that we've selected, hello.dll, now knows where kernel 32 is and um, MS uh, VCRT, the C runtime, it now knows where all these are at. So we can actually dump this to a file. Now I'm going to drop it on the desktop and I'm going to call it dump and then it's natively going to have DLL on the end. All right, let me close out of that, minimize that. If all went well, we should have dump.dll on our desktop. So what can we do with dump dump.dll? Great question. Let's find out. Let's go ahead and do CD into the desktop. And then let's do a run dll32.exe using dump.dll with the argument of dll main. And just like that, we've extracted a dll out of an executable, saved it to the disk and we're able to launch that DLL without the use of an executable on our own by using run DLL32.exe. Pretty cool, huh? So inside my GitLab, I have a few other examples that I want you to try out. So we have main underscore zero X zero two. That is another DLL injection that I want you to look at. It's done a little bit differently than the other one. So for this one, what we're doing is we're doing it a little bit differently. We are taking the address of the DLL, putting it into a, into a virtual memory location, right in that memory location, and then we're getting the, uh, the get proc address of the load library, and then using that to start a coroutine that is going to look at the path and download what's ever in that path and wait for it to do, and then close the handle, and whoa! Sounds like fun. I want you to jump into Ghidra and jump into x64 debug and follow it along and figure out how it is written in assembly code and how Ghidra translates it into C code, how it goes around and performs this action. So that's another one I absolutely want you to try. And then there's one more in here called function, uh, function 0x00, function 00. Take a look at that one. There was one day that I was playing around with uh, string two decibel, and for some reason it crashed my machine like no other, and I was unaware that it was this function that was doing it. I used x64 debug to go through my program step by step until I found out that it was a piece of code that was written in here, and that made the string two decibel function crash. Um, I had to change it out for a string to long decibel after doing some Google research, but I use x64 debug to be able to figure it out. This is not going to crash on you, but this will give you a really good idea of how this define up here is performed, how log print, which all it's doing is printf, but how it actually defines that printf as log print, and then you'll be able to see how a, how a function would call another function, passing in an argument, and how it would return back the the status of it. So take a look at that one as well. That's another one to the, the that's a great one for you to, to practice on. What I want to do now is I'm going to jump into one singular crack me. We're going to jump into crack me zero zero. I have a grand total of ten of them, starting off with zero, of course. Um, I'm going to do the first one and I challenge you to go through all of them. 
If you've ever looked at my YouTube channel, you'll notice that these crack maze have already been done in Ghidra. So feel free to jump on and take a look at some of those videos as well. We're going to be using X64 debug to crack this crack me. Okay, crack me challenges. I'm going to drag this onto X64 debug. And once again, I'm going to notice that nothing pops up. I'm going to drag it again. It's telling me to use X32 debug to debug this file. So you can double click on it and drag it in, or you can just drag it on top of the icon. All right, so it's up and running, but before I do that, I wanna see what it even does to begin with. So I'm gonna minimize all the stuff I just brought up. We're just gonna have a normal terminal, and we are going to see what this crack me does. All right, zero, zero. It says crack me level zero, zero. Enter a password, one, two, three, four. Invalid password. All right, let's try A, B, C, D. Invalid password. I don't know what the password is. The challenge of this crack me is to figure out what the password is. So I already have it pulled up in X64 debug. Let's bring that up. And I also have an X64 debug in the background from earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and close that one so we don't get confused. Now we only have 164 debug running. All right. Uh, entry point. We're currently at the entry point. If not, hit the play button until you get to that entry point. I'm going to take a look at what strings we have. I'm going to right click and search for current region string references. I'm look for string references in which we have crack me level zero password percent sign s a random series of numbers password invalid password okay. Um, so if you've seen, I've already got a breakpoint on this, and that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to go there, but even more so, I'm going to go to the password OK. That's where I want to be. So I'm going to go back to here, and we're going to notice something as soon as we hit play. As soon as we hit play, it goes straight to that. It hasn't even reached a breakpoint yet. So let's go ahead and hit the start button. And once you hit the start button or the asterisk button on your keypad, you're going to see that it's going to put you into ntdll.dll. It's currently waiting for you to, to write in a password. So it's already passed that whole scan F thing. It's currently in the scan F function, waiting for you to put in a password. So let's go ahead and put in something. One, two, three, four sounds good. And then as soon as it comes out of that scan F function, that's where we were just starting to go. And once it comes out of there, then it comes to the parts, parts where we had our breakpoints. And I've got a lot of breakpoints here to include string compare. And this. So where are we at? Right after the scan F, we are putting this, whatever is inside of this address, into our stack pointer. So let's go ahead and step over that once, and then we see that the address is here in the stack pointer along with a couple others. Let's take a look at exactly what's in that stack pointer. I'm gonna follow it in the dump, and I am going to do address of uh, ESP. I, I really want that 040027. I don't know why it's not allowing me to dump that. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Nowhere, realistically, to be honest. Okay, so, oh, there it is. So we have the address here. So we have 00040427. So the address is inside of here. I actually want to go to that address itself. So following dump, oh, here we go. Now that I've, I've selected this, I went to follow and dump, and this time, for some reason, I'm unsure why it didn't give it to me before, but now I have the address of 00404027. So once I followed that and dump, I see that this is here. So this is being put into ESP plus four, and then this, that was an EAX, is gonna be put into ESP. So let's go ahead and step over that, and that is an ESP, and that is the actual value itself, not the address. And then we're doing a string compare. So as for a string compare, let's take a real quick look at what that does. MSDN string compare. So we are indeed comparing two strings to see if they are similar. 
And if they are similar, if they are exactly the same, then we are going to get a zero. So we are trying to see if one, two, three, four is the same as two, five, zero, three, eight, two. I think you're already seeing where I'm going. Which when we step over that, it comes back with a null value, F, 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 F. So it is not zero, so it is not the same. So if we keep stepping, we're gonna do a jump of equal to this. So if EAX, I'm sorry, if the string compare is a zero and EAX and EAX is zero, this is a way to, to test if it's zero or not by doing EAX by itself. Um, ends up that it is not zero, it is still that null character. So it is going to jump to this, in which this is gonna lead us to Oh, my apologies. If it was zero, then it would jump. So it's not going to jump. It's going to continue going down and it is going to tell us invalid password. Let's dump this. We're going to see that whatever's in this address is being put to the ESP, then print it out. And of course, invalid password. So we got it wrong. It's part of life. I'm going to come back up here. We're going to restart the program. I'm going to hit run. And I'm purposely going to type in the password incorrectly again. All right, so the password is incorrect. We know it's incorrect as we've already done it. We're going to string compare. The string compare is going to come back as null. We've done this before. But what we know is that down here, if it's equal to zero, then it's going to make that jump in which that jump, if we look at it, is going to land us right here. And this... It's going to say password OK. This is where we want to be. So we need to find a way to get here. So if this is going to be zero when we make that, uh, after we've made that test, and before we get to this jump of if equal to zero, what we can do is let's go ahead and take this EAX and let's call it zero. So what we're trying to say is that, I'm trying to say that string compare came back with a value of zero, which means what we put in and what it's comparing to is exactly the same and that there are zero differences. That's what we're trying to tell the computer. We know that we're lying, but hopefully we can convince the computer that, that we're not lying and that we actually put in the right password. So we've said that there are zero differences. We're gonna go ahead and make that jump. And if you notice, we didn't do it in time because now it's, now it's uh, putting invalid password in there. And now it's gonna do a printf. So we didn't make it in time. We need to do it. We need to do it right after it comes back before we get to this jump of equal to. So we're going to reload it real quick. We're going to play. And then we're going to come down here, enter our incorrect password. We're going to step, step, go into string compare. It's going to come back with an answer of zero zero. As soon as it does that, we're going to double click on it, change the expression to zero, and then continue stepping. And now we've noticed that we made that jump, finally. And we noticed that we made that jump and it is going to put the value of password OK onto the stack. And then it's going to call printf. And then even though we put in the wrong password, it is saying that we've entered a correct password. This is how we can get around a lot of password-based software executables, just like that. Now, of course, let's see if we can do it the right way. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, reset it. And then let's go ahead and make that jump. So now it's waiting for a password. But before we actually write in the password, let's take a look at what the password is. So I'm going to go to break the, I'm going to go back into references actually. I'm going to double click on this number. So once again, I clicked on the reference tab, 250382. I double clicked on that. And I see that it's comparing to what with what we put in against this. So I'm making the assumption that this is the password. So instead of walking through and changing part of the, the code, we're just gonna write in 250382. And we're gonna let it run naturally all by itself. Once it gets here, we're going to go ahead and, my, my bad. All right, once it gets here, we're gonna go ahead and let it continue running normally. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the play button, hit the play button again, hit the play button again, hit the play button again. 
And then we will see that, if I can pull up the right one, that it has already closed out on us. Let's hit play again real quick. Let's move this over here so we can see it. Go back to references. Figure out what the password is. 250382. Let's go to CPU. We'll hit enter over here. And then let's just walk through and send of hit and play. Because as soon as we hit play, it completed the program and then it went ahead and uh, it exited. So now that we're stepping through, we can see that indeed it is telling us that we have the correct password. Crack me zero, zero, complete. So that is the first of the crack me's. Zero, zero, all the way through zero, nine, grand total of 10. My challenge to you is jump in here and do the crack me's and see how far you can get. So today we looked at X64 debug and we even looked at how you can use it in conjunction with Ghidra to have a really cool dynamic static analysis workflow. So I'm glad you could join me. I hope you learned a lot. And if you have any questions, by all means, you can reach out to me at any of my social media links. If you jump on Twitch, expect to see some Minecraft, World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, uh, but feel free to ask any questions you have about reverse engineering while hanging out and playing some video games. And of course, Twitter is where I hang out at the most when it comes to cybersecurity stuff. Reddit and of course, YouTube. If you have any questions about Ghidra, my YouTube channel is the place to go. Thanks for coming along. And until next time, keep reversing.